and the borders may be purple black. So um, there's a Turkish filmmaker here right now who is doing a movie on CMS. And it seems to be a rather big project, so he's talking to lots of people. And there's a Turkish filmmaker here, Dost Kip is his name. And he's doing a movie on uh, uh, CMS in relation to Ismet. Remember Ismet Sirao, the saxophone player? Uh, yeah, right, good. So I'll tell Dost to call Louise. And how long are you around now? <laughs> <laughs> Could you talk to Annette about it to see, what, see whether he would be up for a little interview or something? Ha, ha, ha. 
It was never uh, conceived as being, uh, I'm here and the students are here. It was always like this, you know. A student-disciple relationship, uh, a master-apprentice, which also Europe has a tradition of that, but it's particularly strong um, in the East. Uh, there was a very creative feeling. People were excited about playing with each other and learning each other's music. And everyone was basically looking for something outside of the norm. You are moving forward, you are searching, you're not standing still, you're trying to make things happen. You're placing different elements of the music together. And everybody was contributing uh, something different. None of us cellos was there, and then Ismet uh, Sorrell appeared and introduced uh, to many of us the whole um, sensibility of Turkish music. And, uh, some of these Turkish melodies that are still part of a repertoire that I use when I teach world music in school. Da -da 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 and he might have put uh, special, maybe some jazz bass lines that he made up. And I, I still have the music that he taught us, and sometimes I play it, and so do some of the other people who were students at that time. I think that uh, Carl and also Peter Applebaum uh, were influenced uh, in the Turkish tradition, which I think is perhaps from the Smet. Uh, I think he was one of the first musicians who really impressed me as having a style of playing that uh, reminded me of vocal music. Sirao played Ney seems like a uh, bamboo cry inside was very deep, very profound. And I've never thought of Carl as a kind of a, a, a money-making kind of a philosopher. He suggested that either I join the army or that I go to a creative music studio. <laughs> and considered them and decided to come to a creative music studio rather than join the army. I think I'm still happy with that decision. And that was the end of my formal academic career. I'm, I'm, I'm not really a great believer on this formal music education. But he was teaching us some music by ear. And it was interesting because Ornette Coleman teaches his music this way too. You no, know, you needed to give a chance to the magic to happen. You know? And that's what this man did for me. He opened this door for my heart, for music. In a few minutes, I was sitting in the drum and I, I'm trying to count, you know. I said, don't count, sing. So he'd put these inflections in. And then I started to see, oh, okay, this is not the kind of stuff you can write down. You have to learn it by ear. And just the, the environment that was created at that time was incredible. Uh, An environment of learning, learning unusual things. They were going to have a Gamala Taki session. Taki, 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 Gamala, and then the second part, Taki, Gamala, Taki, Taki. Bang, boom, bang, boom. Yeah, it's Matt. Thank you very much, wherever you are. <laughs>